Hello my fellow Nightcrawlers, welcome to a brand new video. As usual, grab your blankets and grab your snacks and get comfortable because today we're looking into the case of Wu Bum Khan, a very interesting man to say the least. Obviously, if you couldn't tell from the obvious background change, um, I'm in a new place. Uh, still working out the kinks and whatnot. This might not be the finalized spot. I got a bunch of stuff going on over here, so I'm trying to figure that out. So if it changes again, that, that, that's why. But anyway, just hopping into the case, I'm going to be honest, I don't even have any like lighthearted jokes to make for the intro. This guy is just wild. This story, this case is absolutely insane. I'm interested in sharing it with y'all, but I'm just letting y'all know it's seriously about to get graphic in like the span of 20 seconds. So be aware of that before we hop in. Wubum Khan was a police officer born on February 24th of 1955. On April 26th of 1982, Wu would go on a murdering spree, killing 57 people and injuring 35. He actually had one of the deadliest attacks in modern history up until the Norway attacks of 2011. The massacre is claimed to be motivated by Wu having an argument with his girlfriend. This took place on April 26th of 1982, the day of the massacre. Basically, Wu got woken up because his girlfriend said, oh, there was a fly on your chest. Blah! Hit him with a fly swatter. Apparently, this enraged him, and he woke up furious and then went to work. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I said claimed in the beginning for a reason. I really don't buy the reasoning on this one. We'll touch on that later. Just be aware that I don't believe it was just that. Wu left his house and went to his police station. He was on duty until 4 p.m. In the evening, he returned home. Upon entering his house, he punched and kicked his girlfriend. He also then began to destroy any of the furniture that was around him. In all honesty, this guy's looking like a real peach. With his emotions basically all over the place, he managed to return back to his police station. He collected a weapon, 180 rounds of ammunition, and six hand grenades. And somehow, no one saw this. No one was like, hey, Wu, bud, why do you need that many hand grenades and that much ammunition? W what you doing with that, pal? It was around 9.30 p.m. when Wu eventually started taking fire at any of the nearby civilians that were in the village. There, his girlfriend also got injured. She survived, but definitely injured from Wu and the carnage. After murdering a few people in the market, he decided to head over to a post office in a nearby village. From there, he would kill three phone operators and then cut the lines on all the phones, basically making it near impossible to getting the police involved. Him cutting the phone lines definitely helped him out. A lot. From there, it was very easy for him to maneuver from village to village, basically slaughtering any of the innocent people that happened to come across his path. He murdered 18 people in one village and then went to a neighboring one and then killed 24 on top of that. There was at one point where Wu said to a 16-year-old boy that he wanted him to buy him a soft drink. And once he did that, Wu murdered the family. Police were actually alerted even when the first few shots went off. So it wasn't even like they didn't know it was happening. The problem is though, is that it took an hour to get 37 officers to find this dude. And even then, once it took an hour to get the 37 officers, it took eight to track him. In the early hours of April 27th, he used his last two grenades and tied them to his body. He hid in the house of a farmer and captured his family. When police moved in to arrest him, he flicked the grenades on and killed himself. It also killed the families whom he held hostage. In the entirety of the massacre, Wu left 57 people dead and 35 injured. According to his girlfriend, Wu suffered from an inferiority complex and was being pestered by villagers constantly, asking why they were living together but being unmarried. As a result of the massacre, the police chief basically had his position removed and then actually led to the arrest of four officers. It also even led to the South Korean interior minister and national police chief to resign from their position as a form of redemption for what Wu did. The South Korean government also decided to pay compensation to the victims and families affected by the massacre. Now, if you remember from what I said earlier, a lot of people believe that for some reason that Wu getting hit with the fly swatter is what caused all of this. This is, this is what basically made everything go south. I don't buy that. I believe that it was a contributing factor, but I wouldn't say necessarily that it caused everything. I believe it was more of the inferiority complex that Wu had and the pressure from other villagers that kind of led to what happened. The biggest misconception that people get with killers is that like one day they just snap and then they just start doing stuff. 
Now, of course, this might be the case for some killers and whatnot, but allow me to read some stuff off for you. There's actually a study done in 2018 by the FBI going over how likely it is for a killer to snap. Basically going into the factors of how much planning was involved. It was found out that more than three quarters of the killers spent a week or longer planning their attacks, while two thirds spent at least a month planning, and some spent far longer. And about half of the shooters took a week or longer to carry out preparations for their attack, including obtaining firearms, ammunition, and body armor, or other tactical gear. This is a very fascinating statistic. It really touches on the idea of how, like, there's no real way that a killer snaps. Obviously, you know, there are instances of it happening. I'm not going to say that it's it's never happened ever, but it definitely leans more on the idea of a lot of this stuff is planned out. So my main theory is that Wu was getting fed up. He was getting tired of all of these people saying, why are you living with your girlfriend and you're not married? That's a little weird, Wu. And especially because of the fact that he had an inferiority complex, uh, that probably contributed. While I don't think that Wu getting hit with a fly swatter is what made him say, fine, I'm gonna do it. I do have a strong belief that Wu was thinking about this long before anything ever happened. He was probably wanting to get revenge. He was tired of being pushed around. He was tired of feeling like he's nothing to these people because of the one thing. And it, it, it involves a private relationship. It doesn't even involve these people. Why are they trying to get involved? So all those factors combined just probably started making him think, man, I, I, I want to get rid of these people. I'm tired of these people. And then his girlfriend probably smacking him is what I would say probably maybe put the final nail in the coffin. Of course, this is just a theory though. Don't say like, hey, Night Crime said this, so therefore it's it's clearly true. That's just a theory. I, I, I've tried to make it pretty clear. It's a theory, so don't start trying to quote me saying, well, Caden said this. Before we hop in the end segment though, I would like to take a moment and thank my Patreons. First, my Tormented Knight, chew you up like bubblegum, and then my Knighted Patreons, Alvaro, Bunny, it says deleted, was that an accident? Catherine, Lauren, Lint, Shizen, Steffi Muse, Teddy Elliott, your boy Cam. I do appreciate it guys. Thank you very much for your very generous support. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the video, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't, why not dislike and let me know what I can improve on for next time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you on the next one.